Turmoil and devastation this week in Kyiv after Russia launched its biggest airstrike campaign since the beginning of the war. In response, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky lobbied the group of seven nations to provide more weapons and missile defense systems. And joining us to discuss this, Senior Fellow at Defense Priorities and retired Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis. It's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you for joining us here on this Friday. Colonel, we appreciate it. Good morning, Jan. How are you? Russian missiles have pounded more than 40 Ukrainian cities and towns over the past few days. This is all in retaliation after that bomb blast we know destroyed the bridge connecting Russia to Crimea. Colonel, what's your assessment now of what's happening on the ground in Ukraine? How much more can they take? You know, there is a lot going on right now. There, there is a, a bunch of moving parts and a bunch of other parts that are on the way. Uh, that are going to portend a, a pretty dark and, and difficult winter uh, combat coming up. Right now, Ukraine has offensives going on in both the north in the Kharkiv area and in the south in the Kherson area, as there are reports of up to 60,000 Ukrainian troops getting ready to storm the city of Kherson. Uh, Russia, meanwhile, is, is digging in to try to prevent that in the south. They're actually having their own offensive still in the area of the Donbass area where they're moving forward in the Bakhmut area. And then they're trying to defend in the north area. Ukraine is trying to push Russia back as far as they can before the onset of these, you know, potentially hundreds of thousands of troops that are mobilized that are coming down south. And Russia has just, uh, it was revealed that they have stockpiled uh, hundreds of thousands of, of, of gallons of fuel, more than at any point since the, uh, this, the war started in anticipation of this new offensive. So a lot more is coming and a lot more is happening right now. And President Biden has said the U.S. would provide Ukraine with more air defense systems. At what point, though, do you think this is going to end? We have already sent billions in aid to Ukraine. You know, it's like, what's the end here? Is this, this could go on forever at this point. Well, that's, that's certainly the true case. And that, that's, that's a question I think that the, the White House owes the American people. I mean, what's the objective? Because up to this point, the president has continued to repeat that we'll support them as long as it takes. But I think that we need a little bit more clarity on what that means and what we're signing up for. Because especially in these, uh, these air defense systems that you're talking about, that they promised them to within the next couple of weeks. Uh, and then another uh, six after that. But those are years in the process because they have to be built from scratch. And we have to understand that, as you just mentioned, there are 40 cities have been hit in this current balance uh, uh, barrage. And these, these systems that we're talking, the NASMs, they're point targets. They can defend point locations. So two out of just these 40, uh, you see it's not gonna make a whole lot of difference. And, and that's there are hundreds of other targets that could be attacked. So. We understand we need to know that this is not going to be kind of any kind of panacea and it will help, but it's not going to make a big difference. Last Thursday, President Biden warned that Putin was not joking when he threatened the use of tactic, tactical nuclear weapons in Ukraine. He also said the world has not faced the prospect of Armageddon since Kennedy and the Cuban Missile Crisis. Colonel, how close are we to nuclear war, do you think? What did you make of those comments? Yeah, you know, at the moment, uh, it's not that high. And the reason is very practical from the Russian side. They've been talking about this and, and the conditions under which they would use nuclear weapons uh, for, for many months since this war started out. But at the moment, uh, Putin seems to be putting all his, his stock in what his conventional forces can do. So he's going to wait and see how this mobilization plays out. But here's the real da danger. In the event that the U.S. help to, to Ukraine and the Western help actually starts to succeed and driving Russia out even after this conventional buildup comes, that's when the risk of nuclear war goes through the roof because there is virtually no chance in my mind that Putin is going to allow his forces to be defeated on the battlefield, driven out of territory that they now consider Russian territory and not use uh, tactical nuclear weapons. So we need to be sober about that, that if we actually succeed conventionally, that raises the risk of crossing the nuclear threshold, which would be catastrophic yeah. for all of me. And, and right. And how frightening is that when you think about it? Because that's kind of the goal, right, to drive Russian forces out and to reclaim territory that Russia tries is trying to annex, you know, illegally. And yet if we do that and, and are successful in doing that, this is the this is what we face. It's a lose lose situation, no matter what you that's exactly you right. One hundred percent. And what that's why what we need to do is take American national security interests and, and, and put it at priority, understand that our defense of NATO has to come before trying to help out Ukraine if that actually results in raising the risk to all of us. And at some point, we have to say, 
you guys need to start trying to figure out some kind of negotiated settlement because we're not going to put American national security at risk to try to help something that, that probably can't even be done. Yeah, and in the meantime, President Biden also vowed consequences for Saudi Arabia after the country teamed up with Russia to cut oil production. Are the Saudis supporting Russia in this war? And what are you keeping a close eye on right now when you see the claims of countries aligning with Russia? You know, I, I think that there's a lot of misconception about that. Th this is the OPEC Plus, which is a 23-member e uh, energy cartel, and they uh, unanimously agreed to cut uh, production. This was not for or against any particular country. All of them, pardon the pun, you know, this is not personal, it's business. They're, they're doing what they think is in their best economic interest. They're looking out for their national security interest, just Saudi Arabia, Russia, all of the OPEC members. They're doing what they think is best for their country. We need to do likewise, and we need to look out for our national security interests, however that may manifest itself, and that does not mean pushing the nuclear envelope, as we just discussed. Always a pleasure talking to you, uh, Colonel. Uh, we appreciate you joining us here and giving us your expertise on this. I'm sure I'll be talking Always to you again. Always my pleasure. Shortly. Thanks, Jan. Thank you.